Welcome back to CIS 125. Once again, I'm your instructor, Victor Campos. So we're on the brand new week of instruction. <clears throat> Last week was the holiday. And so we had some time off of there. I did send an announcement earlier today that that does change our semester a little bit, but not really in a negative way. So just to bring that up again here, um, on the syllabus, if you saw the... Uh, the way the semester was set up is that the week of the holiday, um, the week of the holiday was uh, was that week there, and that was going to be our introduction to environments. So as I said previously, usually we're going to do an assignment where I'm going to have you do something kind of specific, what I want, and then you're going to do the more creative one that you want. Well, the one about do the one I want was from that last week. So we're going to skip it. So there's going to be one less assignment. So one less work to do. And one more about, oh, I'll do, I can do it the way I want to do it. So that's good. Uh, so the assignment that was going to be there about trace this and turn it in. And we're not going to do that one. And we're just going over uh, to the you will create what you want type of assignment. And so that's how the... Uh, that's how the semester gets altered a little bit because of the holiday. We're not going to miss any of the material, really, because the, the first several weeks are all about uh, getting used to using the software, using this specific software, of course. Of course, in an, in an Adobe Animate class, you're going to do all your work in Adobe Animate. And so more practice with it makes you better at it, more comfortable. I know that several of you were used to using other software. And obviously you still can, just that for this class, you do want to focus on using the software of this class, Adobe Animate. Because again, this simulates like you get a job someplace in a design studio, in an art studio, in a game studio, whatever, you're working with a team and you may have a very good portfolio, but then they say, yep, we're gonna be using PaintShop Pro. How many of you have ever heard of PaintShop Pro? None of you, because it's been extinct like 20 years. So. Um, they're saying we got to use it because that's what we paid for 19 years ago and we're going to keep using it. So the point is uh, the ability the ability to create with a variety of tools is important. And the tool we're using in this class, of course, is Adobe Animate. Any previous assignment that you didn't get the best grade that you wanted, um, contact me via the inbox and we can talk about redoing it. Uh, because, you know, if you got 9 out of 10, well, you're not really going to get a 10 because it's late. Uh, but if you get like a 6 out of 10, yeah, talk to me about it and we'll talk about it. And you might be able to raise your grade on a previous assignment. Got an assignment this week where you're going to create background, a background for your character. Remember, the whole big idea of this class, plus part two, is that you're creating an original character. We're going to then an original world then an original script, and then it's going to come together to an original animation. So you're going to have something real tangible to show for your next level wherever you go, either to, you know, a four-year college, UCSD, the Cal Arts, wherever, or you go off into the real world, you'll have a portfolio of things that uh, you have the ability to do. We've also, we're going to cover sound and all of that later as the semester goes on. This week, the two weeks were supposed to be about environments. We're going to have one week on it, but we'll still cover everything that we need, so we'll be okay. And this week will be about using another tool, a very weird and interesting tool that maybe you'll hate it, but I don't care because you've got an assignment to do. But then you can decide if you want to use the tool or not in the future. So there'll be an assignment on using this tool, uh, which will give you more um, perspectives on things. And then you can decide how you want to do your own things as we go on. And I'll explain. So oh, before that, actually, I want to say this also. So it looks like uh, the open lab time that I've been promising uh, has been uh, set as Mondays and Tuesdays. I would have liked it to be more days of the week. Maybe we might get them. But definitely at the moment, Mondays and Tuesdays is open lab. So Mondays will be after our class meeting times from three to five. If you want to stay and do more work here, ask questions to the assistants, get work done, um, borrow the tablets and such, you can stay between three and five as much as you want. 
or if you're on campus or you want to make the extra um, trip here, uh, Tuesdays, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. in this room is where we'll also have the lab. So same thing, the assistants, a variety of them will be here. You can come in, use the labs, and get some work done on Tuesdays as well. So our deadlines are Tuesday nights, and if you need a little bit more time to work or help and such, that's why there's also those Tuesdays from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. in this room. The only little thing is that if you do come to the lab, there's a computer on the back corner, if everyone can see back there, that computer all by itself, lonely over there. That one over there um, is our little sign-in kiosk thing. And so when you come in, you need to plug in your student ID number into it and select open lab, I think, or open time, something like that. And then it'll just log that you are here and that's it. And we need to keep track of people using the labs. And if we show that people are using the labs, we can tell our department more people want more lab time, give us more days. So at the end of today, if you do stay lab time, you need to sign in on that. And if you come on Tuesday, anytime, you need to sign in on that. You can sign out if you want, or it'll sign out for you. Speaking of help and such, also, you can ask our assistants for help via Zoom. I have a note here. Uh, the assistants are accessible on Canvas by going to the inbox, and you can send them a message and ask for help as well. Um, so... Uh, Sometimes if you send me a question, obviously I'll reply, but not as fast as you might need because I teach several classes and do several assignments and grading and all that stuff. So the um, assistants are also available and you can contact them via the inbox to search for their names. These are the assistants here. Search for their names in the inbox, send them a message, and then um, they can help you also reasonably during the week. Um, so be mindful of that. Those are ways to get help, either the lab time or the assistance. This week after the main lecture, there will also be a time for extra credit critiques. I have not finished grading the um, original characters, but if people want a little bit of extra further credit, uh, we can do these critiques, which will be, I will open up your character on my screen right here, and we will see it together in class and we can give each other some uh, respectful critique. And then I will also point out a couple of things about maybe think about this for improving your character and such. Uh, and that'll be optional. That'll be after the lecture and there'll be volunteers and that sort of thing. It's optional extra credit. We'll get to that later today. So the assignment, a little preview of the assignment for this week. After we learn about the line tool, which reinforces our, our knowledge of strokes, remember we have fills, we have strokes. You're gonna create an environment for your character, one screen where your character could exist in, one scene, one, one screen, that's it, at least. But the catch is that you have to use the line tool, as we will learn today, the line tool, what it does. And so for this particular week, you're going to create a project folder, you're going to create the project file, you're going to give it a name, and then very open-ended, draw and color a background where your character would have a scene, where it would exist, where it would be in its movie, in its adventure and such. You must use the line tool to create this environment. As the lecture will show, this simple tool can be used to create complex drawings. So be as complex as you want with that background within our time limit. You're gonna save it as a PNG as you did your previous assignments. PNG 24, no transparency, and then upload it to Canvas. And like the previous um, character assignment, tell us a little bit about that environment. Is it a real place? Is it fictional? Does it have a history? Whatever you wanna say, a little bit of text about the, the environment. Attach it on Canvas here as a reply. Um, then you're going to respond to classmates also, give them a little bit of feedback, thoughts on their uh, background. Now, this week is like the whole extra credit week because there's also extra credit here. The line tool is a powerful and important tool to learn, but perhaps you feel more comfortable with other drawing tools in Adobe Animate. For extra credit, you can earn up to three points. It's way too much. I should knock that down to only two. 
if you create another background using any other tool or technique, or you can create additional backgrounds with the line tool, attach them to your submission and add a note telling me this is my extra credit. Remember, you must create one background with the line tool for the assignment, and then you can create more backgrounds with other tools or the line tool if you want, and also upload them here. Now, again, Adobe Animate. Don't go off and create it in Procreate or uh, GIMP or whatever. This is still extra credit that is based on Adobe Animate. But if you're not comfortable with the line tool, as we will learn it today, you can use the brushes and other things that we've covered so far. The main assignment, one background, draw it, color it, use the line tool, paint bucket tool. We still have more to talk about, more advanced coloring like gradients and such. We'll get to that later. Uh, upload it, tell us about the background, respond to two classmates, that's the main assignment. Extra credit, upload more backgrounds, up to three. I guess that's why I put three. If you upload up to three backgrounds, you can get up to three more points extra credit. And even one point extra credit, that's 10% of an assignment. That helps too. So that's the assignment. It'll make more sense as we do the actual lecture, but general questions about the assignment at this point? Yes. Extra credit is always optional. That's why it's called extra. All right, so let's learn what we need to learn here for this week. Um, oh, actually, uh, Angie, could you could you check? Angie, Angie, could you check that the door is uh, propped up? I think it's closed. Um, so we'll get into Adobe Animate. Start to work with Animate in a moment with the line tool. And the way I wanna do this is a little bit more tracing and the tracing will be set up this way. On Canvas, you wanna go either to the live session or the resources. I'm gonna to go to live session, week five live session. And then there's a link, Looney Tunes backgrounds. This is a Instagram account where we're gonna borrow some of their pictures here. I think you need to be logged into Instagram to access this. If not, we'll check that in a moment. But this is a this is an account that's just borrowing some classic Looney Tunes backgrounds. And we're going to use these, at least one or two, to um, practice with this new tool, the line tool. So I'll show you what to do in a moment. But this particular account here shows off a variety of backgrounds of Looney Tunes classic cartoons. And we're going to trace them. Uh, to kind of learn this tool. And some are very complex, so they're going to be harder to do, and some are a little bit easier. But I think for the first thing we will do, I'm going to go with this particular, the mouse hole right here. So I think the best, there's several ways to try to do this. We, we need to borrow a, one of these pictures, and there's often the ability to right-click and save a picture but sometimes a website is set up that you can't. So I'm gonna show you an advanced hacker technique to uh, borrow a picture when it doesn't let you right click. It's called print screen. So here's what we wanna do. Um, go to the Looney Tunes background. I'll also put it in the chat if you can't quite get to it too easily, I guess. Where's the chat? Oh, here. Follow that link. And I'm gonna get this uh, mouse hole the, the third one right here. Here's how we'll do it. I'm gonna click on it to show it larger. And then I'm gonna use the uh, sniping tool. This is on Windows, on Mac, it's slightly different. We have a tool that lets us create a screenshot, capture what's on the screen. And that's by going to the start menu. And then uh, you can search here on the start menu, snipe, sniping tool. This app will let us, this app is built into Windows as a version on the Mac, but on Windows, you can uh, go to your start menu, open up sniping tool. And what this tool lets you do is make a screen, make a little square to capture any screen, basically, even if right click is disabled, usually this will work. And so within sniping tool here, I'm gonna click new, draw a little box, around the mouse hole image. So the sniping tool captured it. Now I'm gonna save it and then 
import it into animate as we've done before. So from the sniping tool, I can click the save icon at the top right, save it. I'm gonna go to the desktop and create a new project folder. Clicked on the left desktop, then I click at the top new folder, call it whatever you want. In that folder, save your screenshot. You don't have to change the name, just save the screenshot. And then in animate, create a new project file as we've done before, then file import as we've done before, import to stage. So I hope I'm not going too fast, but we've done these things before. If you need some help, call me or the assistant's over. You can take a screenshot of that, of that mouse hole from the website, put it into your animate project, and we'll start in just a moment. Use the sniping tool to create a screenshot and put it into animate. Is that page not available on Instagram or is everyone able to get it? Yeah. Uh, I, I can try. I can try to actually Instagram. I captured it from Instagram. I think I can put it in the chat. Does Zoom have the ability to send you a file? Let's see. File. Okay, let's try that. Uh, computer. Does our desktop care folder work? Try it this way. Um, If Instagram is not working, let's do it this way. Uh, uh, minimize everything to go to the desktop. And then actually, Andy, for you, um, we're going to need a USB drive, I guess. Uh, ladies, do any of you have a USB drive we can let Andy borrow for a moment? Nope. Okay, we'll figure you out in a moment. Uh, so for everyone, go to the desktop or everyone that's not on a laptop. Go to the desktop over here. And then there's a link at the desktop that says data files. Double click that data files. Data files is a network folder. Inside of these folders, there you will see web design. Double click the web design folder. And you're gonna see screenshot to 2024, et cetera. Right click it and copy it. On your desktop, right click and paste. So from my network folder here, that's not the data files, web design, screenshot. Sign folder working for anyone or just me? So, yes, I do. So, uh, let me put it on Canvas and then you can download it from Canvas. Everyone can get to Canvas, right? Let's put it on Canvas. I'm going to go into the live view, uh, uh, week five live session. And I'm going to drop a file in there, week five live session. Just give me one moment. What to prepare right here. Oh. 
All right, let's try it this way. Go to Canvas, refresh your screen if you need to. Go to Canvas week five, live session, and then you will see screenshot 2024. Right click it, download it, I guess. However you download off Canvas, right click, save from Canvas. You should be able to get it then. So download that off of Canvas, open it, import it to stage on So create a brand new file in Animate and then import this graphic. You're gonna do that a lot of times in Animate or any other software, you're gonna import graphics or sound. So that's a skill that you're going to practice often. In my case also, um, I, I imported the picture, it's, it's a little too small. So I'm going to use the uh, free transform tool and, and stretch it out to be larger. Now, if you stretch it out, it's going to be all stretched out. Hold down the shift key on the keyboard at the same time. And then when you stretch it out, it'll stay in proportion. If you don't hold shift, it'll get all stretched out weird. Let's keep it in proportion. So, so, use, the, so use the free transform tool and then hold down shift and then stretch it out so we can fill up the screen a little bit more. Remember to raise your hand if you've got a question. Do you have a question? Okay, what is the format? All right, so we've got an image that we're going to use for tracing. We want to set ourselves up as we've done before. We want to turn this into a tracing layer, a guide layer, I mean. Maybe also decrease the opacity a bit. And then also, uh, is, there a, is there a fit to screen key? Uh, maybe, but I usually use the fit in window right there, if that's the question. Um, 
So we want to turn this layer into a slightly transparent guide layer and then lock it. And then on a new layer, we're going to start to draw. We're going to draw with the line tool, which is a very different type of tool in a, in a way. So um, you can double click the um, icon of the, of the layer one, double click it so that it opens up the whole layer properties thing. We can call this something like a uh, mouse hole or something. We'll set the opacity, we'll set that, that to lock. We'll set the opacity to 50 and we'll set it to a guide. So get all of those properties when you double click a layer and the way we're doing it is this. Give it some kind of name, mouse house, mouse hole, um, lock it, opacity 50 or less if you want, guide. Double click it. Uh, I double click. Double click the icon of the layer. Then we'll click OK once we change that. And see how this is all nicely faded out. And then now we're going to use this as our starting point to trace. Now, when we were using the brush tool, brush tool or classic brush gives us a variety of tools and such, but we're going to use this one here, line tool. Brushes use fills and lines use strokes. So sort of like the inside of the shape and then the outside of the shape, the inside of the drawing, the outside of the drawing, fills and strokes. And in the colors down here, that's what that is showing. This solid color is a fill color. And then this outlined color is a stroke color. Clicking on either one lets you pick a color. So let's say I'm drawing some character, you know, uh, black outline and then orange inside. You know, I'm going to draw the Simpsons, right? Because it's inside yellow color, outside black color. So think about that inside color, outside color. A fill is the inside of the drawing and a stroke is the outside. And a new layer to draw on, of course. If I try to draw on this layer, it'll say this layer is locked. Would you like to unlock it? No, it's because I'm on the wrong layer. Make a new layer. Call that layer trace. Want to call it? So give that a name and then we're going to use the line tool, but the color uh, I would recommend because you can change these colors however you want. I'm going to go with maybe like a bright green color. That's going to that's going to contrast very well with what's already there. If I'm drawing with a black line on top of something that's already black, it might be hard to see it. If I'm drawing with a blue line on top of something blue, it might be hard to see it. Often a bright green color will be visible. So make sure you select the stroke color. Give it some color like blue or green. And then the tool properties on the right side, it, this is another place here for you to select color, opacity and such, stroke sizes and such. Uh, and then there's this mode here. Do not click on this mode. This mode, is, this mode causes so many problems. I don't even know why they still have this thing here. I hate this thing. The object drawing mode, every single line will be an independent thing. And almost we never want that. We want every line connected to every line because when we try to fill in colors, that works. If we turn on that option, every line is going to be separate. Therefore, nothing is connected and nothing will be colored. There's a way to fix it if you do it wrong, of course. But one thing to say is do not turn that on. And I wish there was a very obvious way to show that it's on or not. Um, I wish it was like a bright red color that it's on. But don't turn that option on. What I get then is this line tool. I'm going to go with like stroke size 11 or something so I can actually see it. So this draws straight lines. That's the whole purpose of this uh, tool. But via various advanced ways, we can make curves as well. So watch this. I want to make, I want to start to draw this simple scene. And you have to, again, don't think about this as a wall with a hole and light in the floor. Think about it as lines, because Animate doesn't see it as a mouse hole. It sees it as lines. 
And here's how I would do this. If I start from the left and draw a line over here, and then I start over here and draw a line over here, over here or so, one thing that I would say for beginners, don't try to draw your lines at the start of the original line. Try to draw them further than the original original lines. Because every time you have a connection between lines, now you have a place where you can manipulate the lines. So all of those straight lines, now that they intersect with each other, can be manipulated. Back up. So once again, line tool. Don't try to start on the very left edge like that. Go a little bit further out. You'll always be able to clean it up. And also the default is the snap tool, which I don't like. So let's do this. Uh, let's switch first to the selection tool and turn off the snap um, magnet here. This is weird that they don't have the snap on every tool. You have to go to the snap to, let's all go to the selection tool turn off, and again, I wish these were like bright red, but the snap is on, turn it off. Now it looks like I highlighted it because it's blue. No, it's off. But turn off the snap magnet, then go back to the line tool. So that way the lines go exactly where you tell them instead of kind of jumping to each other. Sometimes snap is useful. Sometimes I need the lines to exactly touch each other, but a lot of times it gets in the way. So if, if your lines are, are not going where you want, turn off that snap. Anyway, so I'm going to draw a line over here, a couple lines this way, switch to the selection tool. I want to make this curve, and this is interesting, if I uh, go to this particular line here and pull it up, hey, that's kind of getting like a curve, like the mouse hole, kind of. Now, obviously, as I practice more, I will line these things up perfectly. But what I'm showing you here is when I first drew that line, it was one line that you can grab from the edge and continue to manipulate the, the edge. I grab it by the edge, manipulate it. Grab it by the center somewhere, manipulate it that way. But when lines intersect, I'm going to make a line intersecting here. Now animate sees this segment over here this segment over here, because there's a segment in the middle that divides it, even though they're the same color. Previously, we've seen that when you combine colors of fills, they become one thing. Strokes are a little different, even if it's the same color. If they overlap, it makes a division. Just very weird, but we'll see how, it, how useful it is, because as I then draw this ray of light over here, I've made a division, two divisions here, where I can pull this up. And as a beginner, I'm not going to fully worry about that I'm following every line perfectly. I'm going to get used to how this tool works very differently. As I zoom in here, there's a weird line that is over here. Okay, no problem. Click it, delete it on the keyboard. There's an intersection of a line right here. Click it delete it off of the keyboard. Whenever you select a piece of a line, you can then press delete on the keyboard and delete it. See what I did there? Those, those lines that are overlapping over here, manipulate those for a moment to see them. And when you click one time to select it, press delete on the keyboard. Click to select, press delete. What's interesting, where these three corners connected, that is a manipula manipulatable corner that I can further put closer to the original drawing right there. Corner, maybe. I know technically we also have a little bit of the edge of the wood there. Yes. And I know that the curve over here is technically slightly different. We'll, we'll talk about polishing it up in a moment. I'm just trying to show you here. Let's say that's close enough. Yes, yeah, so those of us that are perfectionists with ADD are going to be tormented that it's not exactly the right curve. Don't worry for the moment. We'll make it perfect soon enough. So we're starting to make the line of the house. Well, maybe that one's a little bit more down here. 
And then the lines of the rays of light right there. Ray of light over here, good. I'll fix that um, hole in a moment. I will also add the wood, edge of the wood in a moment. But let's say I want to draw this top piece of wood or this left piece of wood. That one's relatively easy. It seems to be a couple of lines, a couple of diagonals. Line tool. Again, don't worry about starting right exactly at the corner there because the problem will be when you think that you connected the lines, they might not have actually connected. If instead you make sure that they overlap, you know that they overlap, that they connected, so that when I fill in color, the color will fill in. So avoid trying to connect the corners, have them overlap. So I would draw this bottom line over here somewhere, this top line somewhere over here like that. This top line over here, something like that. So we're seeing here that against a piece of the wood, There's many ways to do everything, of course. But I want to show you with this tool, as you could get some very precise drawings, especially if your background needs to be precise. I hesitate to zoom in as well. I need that angle there. Uh, maybe something like that somehow. So then with the selection tool, click on that piece left over, delete. Click on that piece left over, delete. A vertical piece. If I click on this piece here, it may or may not be where I need it to be, but you'll get a feel for this also as you practice. So uh, line tool somewhere around here, vertical line. If you really need a straight line, you can hold down shift. If you need it at a certain straight angle up, hold down shift, it'll be perfectly vertical or hold shift perfectly to the right. Hold shift perfectly 45 degrees. Hold shift, you get the angles exactly how you want. But if you need perfect vertical, horizontal, or 45 degrees, hold shift as you're drawing the line. So those intersect. These are left over. So select tool, click on that left over, press delete. There's a little left over there. Click on that, delete. There's that piece over here. Click on that, delete. There's a little left over here. Click on that, delete. See some more of the house back there. Tool, select, delete, select, delete. If I hide my, if I hide my, Tracing image for a moment, you can click on the eye. Here's what I've got so far. Not complete yet. Here's what I've got so far. You gotta try for a moment. Try to draw a few of those lines, get it used to that line tool. It's like Peace. All right, so let's say if I want to keep using my tracing image and um, I have this uh, plaster or whatever it is in the wall. Here again, for the practice of it, 
it's not like I'm going to follow every single curve of that wavy plaster and such. And I've also got all of this wood grain over here and I got nails and such. Um, and another example from the Instagram, we will we'll practice on another one with more complexity in a moment. But let's say for this particular project here, um, I want to smoothen out or, or, or move that um, the edges of that a little bit more. Uh, we were using the select tool, but we've also got uh, these other tools that let us access like the individual points of an Im of a line. I said previously that Adobe Animate is a is a is a vector based graphic software. And so it's made out of mathematical calculations. And so the curve that I made over here isn't the right calculation. Now, we don't need to do calculations, but what I mean is we can access the various points then make up a line. There's a tool for that, which I believe is hidden at the moment. Where did they put it? So, okay, uh, it's hidden over here. So we've got the uh, the regular selection tool, this black arrow, which lets you uh, manipulate a whole line completely. But if you click and hold for a moment, you see some of these tools have a little triangle in the corner. That means there's more tools hidden inside of it. If you click and hold the selection tool, you have sub selection tool, keyboard shortcut A. What that does is when you click one time on a line, it then shows you all the various points it's made out of. And you can manipulate each individual point reveal how the line is made out of. You have to switch over to the white arrow, the sub-selection. The default is the black arrow selection. It doesn't show you the points. Um, you have to click and hold the white arrow so that um, you get the sub-selection tool. So especially with some of these, with this curve over here, if you click on it one time, it'll it's going to reveal where all the curves happened at. And you can kind of manipulate things in another way, and you see even more of these control points and so forth. Here's the calculations happening. Yeah, not that you need to do math, but all of these points here are mathematically defined. So again, I could work a bit more to get it perfect, but that curve that wasn't quite right a moment ago, if I go with the sub selection tool, I get these points appearing which then I can further manipulate. Click on a line to, a, to make the points appear. You can, click, you can click on a point to make its further control points appear. And just by playing with it, okay, if I drag this, apparently it's doing that. If I move to the left, it does that. To the right, again, some of this is just playing with it. Like, what happens if I do this? Just try it. I need to, I need to have that perfectly vertical. Well, you have the full manipulation of it so that it is perfectly vertical. So try that for a moment. Uh, sub selection tool to reveal the points of your strokes. We're dealing with this with a stroke tool, the line tool. It's a different way to draw. It can be very precise. The first time you use it, it can be very confusing. That's why we're spending time to practice. When I want to color this in, well, there 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 aren't any solid. There aren't any solid. Um, Lines except for the except for the um, maybe where I had the this this one connected here I can fill in a color here but um, that's not enough I can't fill in colors of this wall or even this board and the light and anything so here's a trick I need closed lines. And as I showed when, when I um, when I said try try drawing a little bit further, 
than what the original line is, like this. Also consider that about drawing further on the whole stage, on the whole canvas, on the whole piece of paper. Because eventually, when we animate, only the things on the stage will be visible. Anything outside will not be visible. It will not exist. If I were to then save this as a PNG, only the things in the stage would be visible. If I were to print this, only the things in the stage would be visible. So that means any lines that are way off over here are going to be ignored. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to extend these lines all the way to the edges off of the canvas. All the way off the canvas. So that then I can just draw some quick closing lines. We need lines that are closed in order for the colors to actually fill in. There's many ways to do things in any graphic software. But what I've done is I've made my lines connect. They're outside of the canvas. They will never be seen when this gets animated, when this gets exported as a ping, when it gets printed. But the point of them being closed now is I can start to drop colors in. You know, It goes off the edge here, but we're not going to see that put colors here like that. So I can um, can close my shape so I can start to drop in colors and maybe I can use the colors that I saw in the um, original if I want. And now uh, the colors that I care about are the fill colors. So with the paint bucket, as we've used before, paint bucket tool, that's using fills. So then I can start to fill in some colors. better colors in a moment. But uh, here's what I'm trying to show that you need solid shapes. Don't be constrained by being inside the canvas. That'll actually cause you more trouble later. Uh, don't hesitate to make your lines go outside of the canvas. They're not gonna exist later. And that's what I've done here. Now I can actually fill in basic colors.
All right, so let me mention a few things here as we get more advanced. Um, you have these, uh, you have these three columns of icons, <clears throat> four actually. You've got these three columns, right? The first one is the lock. When you want to protect the layer, you can lock it. When you want to turn on and off one, there it is, easy. But then the third column, this is where you go into your outline mode. Uh, this one might be useful sometimes so that it simplifies everything just down to the basic lines. Now be careful here because when you're in that mode, it'll also hide all your fills. This is a mode that only focuses on strokes. Since we've been drawing with the line tool, which is a stroke tool, you will only see lines. You will also see like, let's say all my lines here were of stroke size, you know, 55, like that. Like that. Let's say all my lines were like that of 55. Well, of course they're all connecting. Not really, because animate only keeps track of them from the absolute center of their shape. So when I have a 55 stroke size, you know, it looks, yeah, they're all connected. But animate is only keeping track in the exact center right there. And so there's if, if there's a line that is not connected, it's not going to fill in with color. And one way to figure that out is to use that outline mode temporarily. And also, like I said, make sure your lines overlap. Don't try to grab them from corner to corner. Make sure they overlap in a way, and you will know that they overlap so that when you fill in color, you have no gaps. You notice here how quickly I went from the 11 size to the 55 size. As I said, anime is amazing because you can further manipulate every aspect of your drawings very quickly. What I did was I did a right-click select all, and all of these got selected, then all of them, I could go in and edit properties of all of them at once if I wanted. And that's how I went quickly from 11 size to 55 size or back down to five size. And also I don't like anymore that they're all a bright green. Well, I select all of the lines and then I can on all at once, go to the stroke to all of them at once and select the actual color that I wanted using the bright green or a bright red or a bright yellow or whatever is good as a starting point for me to see my lines on top of what I'm tracing. But the end result, you probably don't want a green line. It'll look weird. So there I went and changed all my green lines to black easily by doing the right-click select all just on an empty background with the select tool. With the select tool, right-click select all. The properties of everything selected is right there. One thing is the stroke will be changed to something else. I haven't really done it in class at the moment, but remember way back on day one, when we all opened up Animate and there were all of those little activities for you to do, if you ever want to get back to them, those are under the help hands-on tutorials. Remember all of these, the jellyfish and all of that help hands-on tutorials. But part of what the tutorial told you at one point was check the result of your animation by playing it. Remember there was this play icon on the very top right corner. We haven't really been doing it. We haven't really needed it. But if you if you if your drawing is semi-complete and you and you click the test movie on the top, it'll it'll show it to you as if, okay, here, here it is. Here's the animation of it, or here's the drawing of it, or whatever. And again, notice that the outside stuff of the canvas is not there. It doesn't exist. So that's why don't hesitate to make your lines way outside of your canvas. That's actually a very good pro tip. And that's what it's done in the real world. On the real world, like 
hand-drawn types of animations. They have an animation cell, a transparent piece of plastic. They draw on it and they even overdraw onto the edges because the camera is only going to photograph a portion of the cell and what's outside of it doesn't exist for the camera. Same thing for us. Outside of your canvas doesn't exist. So take advantage of it. And so what we've got right here within this particular drawing, we'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. The thing that everyone forgets because um, assistance, could you assist over here for a moment? So um, what we got here is what happens is that we get lulled into a false sense of security that our background has fully been colored in. Actually, it's not. There's a part that's missing. I didn't finish drawing, uh, filling in the color of the behind of the house or whatever, because my stage color right here um, is still set to white, still the basic white color. I forgot to say it for us, but whenever we start to draw, I would recommend to switch over to another color for the background besides white, like maybe a little gray color. And so uh, in this case, that reminded me, oh, I never filled in the color back there. But if I change my stage color to a gray, I, rem I remind myself, oh, there's a color I'm missing back there. So I'll fill in one more color. So draw that up a little bit uh, as much as you like what makes sense to you. Then we're right on time for a break. So uh, it's one o'clock, take a 10 minute break. Uh, get this working nice. We'll practice with it a little bit more on another background from Looney Tunes in a moment. I'll put it on Canvas in a moment. But practice that for a bit. Take a break. We'll be back at 1.11, and uh, we'll keep learning a bit more. Thank you. 
Oh, it was the one with this little bit of tink. Um, it's one of these two, but it's the one with tink. And then the necessary, and I got to get you all keys, but it's that one. This one that's really messed up is for the other. Uh, you got to get sticky tape or whatever really most of these. <laughs>
All right, everyone, let's go on. So this was our first version of a little bit of drawing with the line tool. Let's do a little bit more of a complex one. So I'm going to give you the uh, another example. We're going to do this one, a deep, scary alley, deep, dark, scary alley. So uh, same thing, go to go to the week five live session on Canvas. That's the easiest way or get it off of Instagram. That one is you have to scroll down if you find it, but get it on Canvas. I put it on Canvas. There's a second item one that says 130410. So same thing. Create a new file. Let's, well, I guess we'll do it in the same file. Yeah, let's do it in the same file so we can talk about folder organization. So uh, download it off of Canvas, the second image, the one that ends at 130410. Import it to the same project uh, into its own folder. And then I'll show you all a little bit of folder organization. So from Canvas, you want to do the save it off of Canvas. Here in Animate, I will create a new layer. Maybe I'll call it BG2 or something. Lock your other layer. Hide your other layers. So in a new layer in the same file, we will do file import to stage. Wherever you downloaded that picture, it probably ended up in your downloads folder, maybe the desktop, wherever it downloaded to. And now import the second screenshot. Same sort of thing. It's a little too small. So I'm going to use the um, free transform tool to resize it, holding down the shift key. We'll double click the icon of that layer so that we can lock it, opacity it, guide it. New layer, trace two. Start to draw that in a moment. Anyone having any trouble getting that into your project? But we can also organize our layers into folders. Right now, I've got four layers visible there, um, two related to the mouse hole, and then two of this alley, four in total. That might be okay, but I can organize myself. We have this little icon here for a new folder. Let's organize ourselves a bit. So if you create a new, uh, depending, depending on the last layer that you clicked on, when you click to create a new layer, it'll create it above it. So if I'm on the mouse and I create a new layer, it'll create it above it. If I'm on the trace number two layer and click new layer, it'll create it above it. Same thing, same thing with the folders. Um, so if you um, click anywhere and click the little folder, it'll create a folder. Uh, this has got some sort of a name and you can call it like, you know, tracing one, create another folder, tracing two, This little arrow next to it shows open or closed, visible or invisible in a way. And at the moment, they're both empty. So I made these two uh, these two folders, simply click new folder, and then just drag the appropriate layer where it's supposed to be. And you see when it's in the folder for organization, it's also indented. Make sure the order is the right order. And same thing here. I'm dragging this one layer into that one folder and then dragging this layer into the folder. And you see the little line that appears that shows you you're about to drop it here or there, etc. So that should tell you where it's going. Now you can have this organization of two layers or 20 layers. When we get more advanced later and we actually do animation, we're going to have backgrounds and you know clouds and cities and trees or whatever and buildings and roads and whatever. And various things are often organized into folders. Because if you don't, you're going to have a stack of layers down on your timeline there and hard to manage. If you make organizational units or folders, name them something meaningful, then it'll be easier for you to keep track of them. You can also grab the edge right here if you want to, if the, if the names are getting cut off. You can grab the edge divider there. 
and organize yourself. Also, you can grab the edge divider at the top over here and organize that panel. You know, don't drag the tab, but you can drag it from over here to organize that panel as well. This is optional, but recommended. And so all of these tracings, and even if these uh, items of this layer are hidden, you can click the little eye right there to for all of them at once to hide them or show them. So that's kind of cool. That's another reason to also put things into layers. That way you can hide and show things easily, lock things easily. So in this new, I've got a ground that I've imported. I've got a new trace to do, trace two. And it'll be similar to what we did a moment ago. But let's look at it and think for a moment. So if I if I look at the brand new background we're going to trace. So there's some things that are pretty straight lines. So, you know, that building right there, straight line, that's pretty easy. There's a little bit of a curve here, but I can make it straight. That's fine. Then there's over here a straight line, too. There's a bunch of bricks and such, and they technically have a lot of detail to each line. But for a learning process, that won't be too bad. We do have some round things that are definitely round that I'll show you different ways to make round things. Um, there's this big arch over here that's going to be rounded. There's a shadow here, but I may not make a separate shape for that color. But I can start to see that there's going to be some big lines. I'm going to overlap the lines. And remember, go outside of the go outside of the original line. Don't just follow the starting to the ending. Go further than it. And as a reminder, tell me in the chat, does anyone remember the advanced technique to uh, temporarily show or hide your panels. You know, they might get in the way. What's the way to show or hide your panels quickly? You want to remember that? Keyboard shortcut on the keyboard of F4. You press F4 on the keyboard. That will hide your panels temporarily. Right, so... Let's see. Um, oh, uh, okay. So um, make sure you're on your new trace layer. Get any color of line. I'm going to go with just a bright red line, a bright red stroke. That one usually is very visible. Size is good. So I'm going to go down to maybe six. E1 is good. And this is not even to say, I haven't even looked at these styles over here. You can make wavy lines and dotted lines and such. But we'll keep it as a solid solid line, six points. I'll start off with um, just again this big vertical line here of the of this building. It's a line there. Maybe this building on the left as well. Just kind of a line down here, basically. This window. Here's a line. There's a kind of a curved line there a bit, but I'll make it straight for the moment. Straight line here. I can kind of see at the very edge over here that there's a line that begins there. So naturally I will just extend it all the way. Again, don't start at the corner right there. You don't know if that's actually connected. Overshoot it for a little bit like that, all the way over here somewhere. Don't worry about following every line perfectly. We'll be able to polish it in time. Yes. see so on this particular window there is a curve but i'm going to make the line straight here because later i can curve it and maybe sometimes you can think about making these all straight lines and then go back in and add the the the, the curves after the lines are there i might try that for a moment um this one about the uh circles and such um i'll preview it for the moment then we'll use it 
correctly in a moment. We have the ability to make perfectly straight rectangles, perfectly straight circles. So that'll be a valid thing to, to use also for the assignment. We've been focused right now on manually every single line, but it's just gonna be way easier in some instances to actually use circles. So we can practice with this a bit here. On the rectangle tool, that tool makes a square. Okay, cool. Which also then has you select the color there in the corners, right? The outside, the inside. If I get the square, the rectangle tool and make a rectangle, it's got a color inside, exactly as I told it here in the corner. But I don't want the color inside. So if you click on the icon of color for the fill, there is a no color right there. So I do want the stroke color. I want to draw a rectangle, but I don't want a color inside. So select your fill, uh, watch right there, and then select the no color. So now when I draw a rectangle, it's only the outline. It's only the stroke. That's what that's showing. Only the stroke, no fill. Okay, but the point is uh, rectangle are ovals. So we've got rectangles, we've got ovals. These ones about primitive, don't ever use those. They're more complicated than you think. And polystar that can make you that can let you make hexagons and octagons and also stars with various points. We'll play with that later. But for the oval, let me draw circles and such. If I hold shift, it's a perfect circle. Without shift, it's a it's a it's an oval. And I might be drawing an oval, and it's not quite the right angle. Well, the um, free transform tool will let you move the move the object around. It will also let you rotate it. Also, let you skew it. So if I want to try to draw this top of this cauldron, I, I might not worry about straight lines that I need to curve. I probably would do circles and then manipulate the circles like that. So oval tool, make sure I've got no fill, only stroke. Start to draw some kind of oval, kind of the right size, kind of in the right area. Then I switch over to the retransform tool. Click it one time to select it. And then depending on where I put my mouse, it will either rotate the thing, it'll either skew the thing, or it'll move the thing. So the one tool can do all of those. So this cauldron has like an outside and an inside. Just more practice with more drawing. Also, there's copy and paste techniques, but just more practice. Same like, I guess that's a manhole down there, manhole cover, pretty easy. say I wanted to draw the top. There's so many ways. Again, I, I could draw the top of that barrel by making a straight line and then, okay, curving it up. Sure. What about this? Let me show you this. If I have a, if I have the uh, oval tool, let's say I draw an oval, there's the top curve of it. Good. And then I draw the lines, straight lines over here. Well, every time, every place that I've had that line is now a division. So I can select uh, to select that part and delete it. Select that, delete it. Select that, delete it. So now I've got the part here where I can start to manipulate that curve. Earlier, I drew that line of the building. And now that I'm trying to move the line of the barrel, it's moving the line of the building. So I just have to kind of be careful what I'm doing. Yes. Yes. 
let me show the barrel again. So this technique is starting with a circle and then making lines on it. So I'm going to first make a, a circle with the oval tool somewhere around there, a little bit of a curve up there. Then with the line tool, I'm going to make lines. I'm going to make lines coming over here somewhere. Lines over here somewhere. Now that all of these have intersected, well, that means it's, that I've got this top segment that I want, and then these side segments that I don't. So if I select them and press delete, side segment that I don't want, delete, top segment I don't want, select, delete. This is definitely where the keyboard shortcuts are very useful. Instead of moving the mouse over to click, if you memorize V for a very good selection, I guess, and then N for not a bad line, and uh, what else do we use? O for an oval. All of these shortcuts come from, if you hover over, it'll tell you B for a brush and such. So from what I've drawn there so far, I'm getting that top curve that I like. So I switch back to the move tool, select tool. I grab that corner and then I move it down to where I want. So there, I guess. Bring that down here. Sometimes you get here where you think, oh, I thought that was properly connected and such. Well, here's the part where then we haven't said it today, but here's where you can also select some lines and uh, do the smooth in or straighten. So all of these lines that we're trying to draw, they also can be smoothened and straightened like we did with the brush tool. My curve wasn't perfect, so I started to draw it. And then I smoothed it versus the line tool, which can be very precise, but sometimes the line isn't quite right. Select the line, hit smooth or straighten. That might give you good results too. Sometimes it happens. I don't like how this is looking at all. Yep, just double click to select it, delete it, try again. This is why we have the lab times on Mondays and on Tuesdays if you come to class. That's why the deadlines are on the following week, Tuesday, because it's a lot about, about trying it. Mistakes starting over. Practice. Don't consider that it's always going to be perfect the first time through, especially if you're a beginner. So we'll try that for a moment to trace some of these lines. Try that for a moment. We'll color and such in a moment, but start to trace some lines. See how it moves. Um, our
All right, so let me reveal this amazingly advanced technique here. You have, for example, a bunch, you're going to have a bunch of lines that overlap. And it's annoying, but not too complicated to select each line and then delete it. Here's a better way. You can use the eraser tool with a hidden mode. The eraser tool, of course, if you drag with the eraser, it erases. But the eraser tool with, with the lines, you can turn on this special mode here, this, and it makes no sense, this water faucet. And what the water faucet mode does is, now you just have to click one time on the extra lines and they get deleted. So try this, eraser tool, turn on the faucet mode, and then wherever there's an overlap, click it, gone, click it, gone, click it, gone, click it, gone. Instead of having to select and delete, all you have to do now, here's that trick, you go to the eraser tool, turn on faucet, and wherever there's an overlap, it deletes it. Now be careful because obviously this can delete way more than you expected. So just make sure you're clicking where you think you are. But if you've, if you've gotten to the point that you've got a lot of overlapping lines, this eraser tool trick is amazing. I don't know why they use this water faucet. Use faucet mode to remove stroke segments or filled regions. You know, it doesn't really tell you what it's doing until you try it. And again, be careful because it'll erase complete lines if they're not attached to anything. Whoops. But wherever there's wherever there's uh, overlapped lines, faucet mode of the eraser will save you so much effort when you're using the line tool or oval tools and such to draw these lines. chat. Now that we've had a little bit of practice with the line tool, tell me in the Zoom chat, do you love it or hate it or somewhere in between or meh? What do you think? Tell me in the chat. What do you think so far about this tool? I personally love it, but I've been using it for years. And obviously with a lot of practice, you get very good at it. But what about you? If most of you are beginners, do you like this? Do you hate it? Do you somewhere in between? Somewhere in between. <laughs> so... That's what I like to hear, starting to like it. If you didn't like it, you might start to like it. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't like it, that's fine. Remember, the assignment will have, um, to do a quick review of the assignment, the assignment will have you draw your own original background. You won't have to trace anything for the assignment. Uh, let's look at the assignment very quick again. Uh, the uh, assignment is you're going to draw your own background for your own character that you will um, draw and color. We're, we've kind of focused on flat color at the moment, we'll, and a little bit of cell shading. We'll cover gradients and such later. Um, but you need to color it. You need to draw it and color it. it. can be as elaborate as you wish, save as a ping 24. And remember, I said extra credit. Maybe after you decide, well, this tool's OK, but I really want these certain kinds of curves and lines and such. OK, extra credit you can draw the same version of it with the other tools if you want. If you're more comfortable with the other tools, for extra credit, draw your extra credit with another tool. For the assignment, you do have to do it with the line tool. Question. That's exactly what the assignment says, so yes. Yeah. In bold, a few times, it says you must use the line tool. So yes, for the assignment, everyone's got to use the line tool for this assignment. But for extra credit, if people want to do their background also with the other tools, that's fine. And I will accept up to three extra credits 
for this assignment, but the main assignment has to be done, as I have noted here in multiple places, that it is with the line tool. And since people are responding with, uh, people are responding with, I like it, then perfect. Now, if you don't quite like it, you're going to practice with it a bit, get the assignment done and never look at it again. But for the assignment, uh, you do have to do it with the line tool. Yeah, it could be, it could feel pretty difficult, definitely, but practice will get us to a point at least where we're not completely, uh, that it feels completely alien to us. This is one of the ways that we can get really perfect lines. If you look at animation that has really nice, crisp lines, they're using this kind of tool. They're not using the freehand brush tool with our imperfect hand movements. They're using perfect lines like that. It does take practice. But again, for the class, there's going to be this one assignment that requires the line tool and everything else will be more open-ended. But practice, that's why we have all of the lab time and such. So I, I kind of think for the moment, maybe as we've done this together, I think we've looked at it enough together for maybe just to get into work time if you want. We'll take a vote here in the chat. Tell me if you'd like a, a little bit more guided practice together for me to open up another one and we'll do some more together. Or do you want to work on your own? So vote for work on your own or more lecture, basically. And if you want to work on your own, then we'll end the class. You know, you can stay and work. Of course, you can work at home or at the beach or whatever. I think it's going to rain, though. Um, but what do we think here? Vote right there. Do we want more lecture or work on our own? Three votes for work for works on work on your own. But I'm sure the teach us more will suddenly get 10 votes any second now. So the people have spoken. So. Let's do that. We're going to uh, end the lecture at this point. All of this that we've done here is practice. You don't need to turn it in. You don't need to complete it, although I would recommend you do for practice. We'll go into the, I'll answer that question one moment. We'll go into the lab time. If you want to stay and work, great. If you want to work at home, fine. Remember, there's lab time tomorrow also. And remember the you can go to the library. Actually, assistants, can you confirm? At the library, they have the, they have animate at the library? They, okay, so we have one confirmation. So they have Animate at the library too. So if you can't come in here Monday or Tuesday for lab, there's the library. So we'll get into lab time in a moment. Um, work on your own. you got a question. Can the background be any cartoon background of the ones you have on Canvas? Oh, um, for the assignment, you're going to make your own background. You're going to make your own original background for your original character. So this that we're doing together is just for us to learn and is nothing you're turning in. But Mario, it's going to be that your own background, your own idea. It can be based on an existing thing that exists, but I don't want you to trace something that exists. I want to do your own thing now that we've had the experience of doing a little tracing. And a question here, how do we lighten the image again? Uh, okay, we do it like this. You're welcome. To lighten up the image, you have to go right here. Uh, you double click on the layer you're trying to lighten. Double click its icon. And then that pops up the properties. From here, you want to select instead of visible, which is fully visible, you want to change that instead to opacity. 50% is good or less. That's how you lighten it up. And don't forget to turn on guide as well. Lock it, opacity 50, guide. That'll be helpful if you want to trace anytime. So, okay, everyone voted to work on your own. So I will end the lecture at this point. Do they have animate? And yes, uh, uh, someone confirmed, a few people confirmed that they have animated the library. Yes, if, uh, oh yes, you're saying that it is, yes, yes. Uh, so yep, animate is in the library as well. So we'll end the lecture at this point. Stay and work as much as you want. Class officially ends at three, but there'll be lab time until five if you want to stay. And then tomorrow between 11 and five, there's also lab here. And animate is in the library too.